The first day of the autumn term can be a daunting prospect for children starting at their big school and for the NQTs who will be teaching them. Old No Junior School in Birmingham is one of the largest in the UK with a five form intake. For many of these children, it will be the very first experience of an entirely new culture and language. Two NQTs meeting these challenges are Simrit Riat and Victoria Rutherford, who became friends at college and are now starting their teaching careers together as colleagues. In this programme, we're going to focus on how Simrit manages her children and establishes classroom routines. Educational expert Sue Cowley will look at Simrit's morning lessons and reflect with both NQTs on what it's like teaching Year 3. The pencils are sharpened, the walls have their displays. All that Simrit and her Year 3 colleagues are waiting for are the children to fill their empty classrooms. OK, this is my room, it's Year 3, um, and I'm going to hopefully have some letters saying Miss Riyak on the door so that the children know it's my classroom. <laughs> In my class I've got 30 children, so it's quite a full class. Coats, it's hanging up there. Notice board there, that's for the children's notice board. Um, and things like timetables will go up there, what they can do at wet play. I'm just going to be firm, just to make sure that they know the rules right from the beginning, because that's important. I've learned that from my PGC. When I originally came, the carpet area was over the far corner, which didn't suit me because I wanted it to be right in front of the interactive whiteboard. I wanted it to be more like the children's classroom as opposed to my classroom. I'm a bit scared about tomorrow because it's my first day. I think little things that I haven't really thought about, like who takes the register, who takes the dinner money, at the end of the school, what happens. But I think I am also excited as well. In fact, I know I am excited, just knowing that this is my classroom and that I've got to look after the children. <laughs> Simrit's still getting to know her class. Her 30 Year 3s are organised into ability groups based on end of Key Stage 1 results. Right, three F's, stop, stop, and listen. Fantastic, well done, three Oh, I'm looking to see who's the first table that's going to put their books away. I think it's going to be green table. Would you like to go and put your books away? Who can remember what we've been doing in science? Oh, what have we been doing? Mohammed? Teeth. Good boy, we've been doing about teeth. And we learned. After this prompting, Simrit gets the class to work in pairs, something they're not yet used to doing. Come and talk to the person next to you, to your talk partner. I want you to talk about what, what you think is inside is your talk. Danielle, what do you think is inside a tub? A root. You think a root as well, Nasruddin? Blood. <coughs> you think there's some blood? Blood. <coughs> You're going to say blood as well, please? Next stage of the lesson, naming the parts of a tooth with the help of a 2D diagram. <laughs> I'm just going to read to you this fact file. Right. It says, each of our teeth has a hard white coat called the enamel. One or two children relate what they hear to their own experience, but many sit listening patiently. This is called the cement. It fixes the tooth to the jawbone. The same labelling exercise for all the year threes proves a bit of a struggle for some of them. It's a delicate balancing act to ensure the curriculum is delivered while keeping a diverse class of children engaged. So, how does Simrit feel about her first steps into teaching? I think I'd set them a lot more work than they actually managed to do because I'm still trying to get to know how much they can actually you know, achieve in one lesson. I've put them together with children who talk the same language so they don't have to talk in English. If they want to talk in their home language, they can. 
So I just wanted them always to be sitting next to their talk partners just so that I can say, turn to the person next to you without having the children getting up and moving. Oh, most challenging part of the morning. I think just establishing my routine because they're still not used to it and they still, they need to have that constant reminder and it's trying to find a nice way of saying what they should be doing. Because they are still new and they are young, they're not used to it from their other school. So it's just trying to get it across without sounding like you're nagging too much. <laughs> Head teacher Bupinder Kondal leads the senior management team that recruits NQTs for Old No Junior. So what can Vicky and Simrit expect as they join the staff? It's a challenging school to be in uh, uh, and they've got to fit in into that and also fit into all the systems that we have established here within the school. We know what they are because we've been in this school for a number of years. They're coming in and they're expected to know and they're expected to run with it. Sue Cowley has been looking at Simrit's teaching and six weeks into the term joins both NQTs to discover what they've learnt in the classroom. Victoria, I understand you two knew each other before you started work at the yeah, school. Yeah, we have met on our PGC course last year. Right. So we studied together and then got the same job. And do you think that's been a help, the fact that you know each other, you're working with the same year group? Definitely, because mm. from the immediate outs that you can just go and have a chat with them and just say, oh, you know, before you know all the other teachers properly well enough to ask so many questions yes. how you like to think, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, can you just give me a little bit of information about what you're looking to get out of this process? What, what are you after, Simrit? With me, I think um, my differentiation, because in my class, the ability range is so wide right. that I feel that like I don't know whether I'm supporting all areas, so I think help with making sure that every child is being challenged. Now, Simrit, we're going to look at some footage of you in the classroom. Okay. Um, the first thing I wanted to look at was a lovely moment right at the start of this lesson <laughs> where you do something really great. Let's have a look at it. Well done. You've all done that. Really, really sensibly. You came and sat down on the carpet quietly. Okay, so at the start of that little section, what did you do to your class? Well, I don't know. Make sure that it, I don't know. <laughs> Praise them? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it was lovely, and there was a lovely little pause before you said anything. What was that pause designed to do? Make sure that everybody was looking at me and yeah. listening. Yeah, as you're already able to kind of read the class and understand that they're not quite ready for you to talk to them. And then you talk to them when they're ready, and the first thing that you say to them is fantastic. And how are the children feeling about that? Then? Yeah, they really like it. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, yeah, they enjoy that. But right, Simon, I noticed uh, during this initial section of the lesson that you use something called talk partners. Can yeah. you tell me about that? Um, I've paired children up together, either because of their language, so that they can talk in their home language if they need to. Brilliant. Or um, in terms of ability, so that they can support each other. It might be reading, I might have had something that they had to read on there, so talk partners are used so that they support each other. And you said to me earlier that you were interested in looking at how to differentiate. Yeah. And that's one way in which you are already differentiating. So you've spotted that these two children have got the same home language. Yeah. So to allow them to access the work, yeah. you simply pair them up together. OK, Simrit, now we're about to watch the start of the lesson as such, yeah. although you've already spent approximately 10 minutes with yeah. them on the carpet. Now, after about 10 minutes, how do you think they're starting to feel? <laughs> um, yeah, I think their concentration just goes. Yeah, a little bit fidgety. I mean, as a rough guide, their age plus two is about how long they will be able to concentrate to you talking to them. Yeah. So how old are your year three kids? Seven. Okay, plus two is nine minutes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So they've had about sort of nine minutes already of you talking, and you're now going to go into a section where you have to explain some things to them. So you do have to talk. Mm. But a really useful tip is to intersperse it with things where they can be active. To See, them. I thought having them doing talk partners, I thought that would be. It is. That's one lovely way to break it up. Okay. Yeah. But we need to think of more because yeah. we're trying to kind of keep the pace of the lesson going. Right, okay. Yeah, they might break nice and nice. Yeah. Good. Right, three guests. Let me see those hands then. Why do you think it's important that we've got a hard enamel on the outside? <laughs> right, it's to look after it. And it's also to make sure that when we're eating our food, that we actually can crunch it. It wouldn't be very good if our teeth were floppy and we tried to eat an apple. 
Victoria, can I bring you in on the, this point? Can you tell me a little bit about how you feel Simrit uses her voice with the class? Do you think she's doing it well? Yeah, what, she's doing it really well. She it? changes, doesn't she, her intonation to make them more interested and to keep them alert, because if obviously you monitor and they're just going to be... <laughs> and do you see how all. she's almost modelling how she wants them to them be to thinking? Be, yeah. through, just through changing the tone of her voice? Who can remember what we've been doing in science? Oh, what have we been doing? It seems quite a natural thing for you, Simrit. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah. That? You're not really thinking about no, doing it. No, at all. And it's lovely, and I think that's something that's a really, really good, positive thing about the way you teach. Right, we've got the pink gum part here, and I should have another one there. Maria, can you just see if you're sitting on it? What could you have brought in at this point to back up this conversation about the gum and the root? And Is there anything physical that you could have brought in, do you think? To kind of spice it up a bit. You mean like a, a natural tooth thing? Yeah. Oh, brilliant idea. Oh, I, didn't know, I, didn't, I didn't know we had them. If you're not sure whether you've got something in school, do ask. Yeah. The other thing I was thinking is perhaps looking at some different types of mixes of different substances, what would things stick into well? So you might get some plaster scene. So, okay, would a tooth stick one well to this? Do you see what I mean? Oh, to actually yeah. get them experimenting with different materials. Yeah. The other thing to do is to check whether any of the children have a parent who's a dentist. They might be able to get you some x-rays. So when you're planning, and perhaps you could both do this, think ahead about the kind of resources you might want to bring in. Yeah. Okay, let's carry on for a moment. what you're doing here, you're sort of popping around to lots of different children. This was the feedback, so it wasn't today's lesson that they were doing, they were doing the feedback from the week before, and I'd written them a question that they had to answer, um, and they couldn't read it, so I was going round and I was reading it with them or for them right. to help them do that. And what might you have done instead of going round to individuals, <laughs> which you've realised <laughs> yeah, I should have just told them all at the same time. Right. So you could have done your lovely stop, look and listen. Can yeah. you do that for me? Because how do you do it? You go, <laughs> stop, stop, look and listen. Okay. <laughs> and it's brilliant, and because they do. <laughs> yeah? So you stop them all and you explain... Right, at this point in the lesson, we're meant to be doing the feedback. I mean, I think there's a great temptation to feel that these kind of feedback sessions have to be written. But you might set a task for the whole class, turn to the person next to you and talk about what you learned in the last lesson. So it doesn't necessarily have to be that quite that individualised and quite that difficult for them. Can I ask, of our conversation today mm. and picking apart your lesson, what two things would you say have come out that interest you to look at further? Definitely the fact that children can only concentrate for like their age plus two more minutes because I think I keep mine on the carpet too long. Okay. Um, and also making sure that, you know, I need to have a quicker pace and making sure that they're all engaged and having different little, you know, practical activities to keep them on task. Brilliant. So I'll come into your classroom, we'll maybe do a bit of team teaching and see if we can work on those two areas. Yeah. Great. Thank you.